Hi everyone and welcome back to the uh, lithium ion cell capacity checker uh, series. So um, we've got quite far. We've got the screen now so we can monitor the progress and find out what's going on and ultimately find the capacity of the cell. We've got the resistors to protect the Arduino uh, and various other pieces. We've got the LEDs to let us know if the thing is currently draining or if it's completed. Um, we've got the switch over here which is a way in which we can interact with this device. We've got the transistors which actually switch on the draining in order to find the capacity of the cell. So in terms of wiring we're almost there. But I want to just, uh, I don't know, divert from the wiring and the coding for a time for, you know for a short while and we need to sort of step back and think about how this is going to actually work in terms of the menu so at the moment you can see that the menu is basically nothing it's just um is this going to focus hang on a sec yeah there we go the menu is not really anything it's it's just um the very basics the voltage the amperage the time and the average amount of amps we need something much better than that. We need to be able to press the button over here to say go and all this sort of stuff. So anyway, I'm just going to push this aside for one minute. Alright, so the menu system of this little project, how will it work? Well, I've spent some time uh, thinking about how I, how I expect this will work. Now, I haven't actually got one of these checkers. I've never used one, and I've not really researched them. So this is off the top of my head, and this is how I think, or how I expect this thing to be. So to start with, the little screen will say, um, welcome. So the screen will say, welcome. Then after a second or two, or whatever, it will say, insert, insert cell. And then press when ready or something like that. Press when, press when ready. So the screen will then say that. Now when you press the button, it will go to another, um, another screen. Now here we've got to think about this in a bit more depth. Yeah, let's, let's do this. So press when ready. Now ideally it'll say the voltage of the cell. So the voltage is, you know, 4.2 volts, and then it'll say press to start. So ideally that's what will happen, but what happens if you put a cell in that's no good? Well, what will happen here is if, when they press that, if the cell is no good, uh, in other words, if the cell is, is has got a low voltage, there's no point in testing the capacity of a cell that's got a low voltage. So, you know, if cell V is less than, I don't know, probably 3 or something like that. Yeah, 3. If it's less than 3, then go to a different screen. And the different screen will say something like, the cell is no good. Um, I don't know. Obviously better wording than that, but you get the idea. Cell's no good, and then it'll say something like, insert a quality cell or something like that. And it'll go back to there, insert cell, press when ready. And it'll just repeat through these until it gets a cell that's good. Anyway, so if you press start here, it will go to the drain screen. Drain screen, which is of course the voltage, amperage, time and average amperage, which you've already seen before. So it'll go down there. And then when that's done, it'll go to a summary screen. And the summary will say... I, don't know, I suppose it could just say the capacity. Well, no, let's say average amps. The average amount of amps is like, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, 2 amps or something like that, or 2,000 milliamps. And the time taken, time taken to drain it, um, 60 minutes, something like that. And then we want the capacity, capacity... Um, then we'll say 2000 milliamp hour. You know, it will work just like that. And that's what I expect to see. Oh yeah, and then 
press the button to restart, you know, you press to restart or something like that, or press to exit, and then that will go all the way over there and back to this menu. So that's how I expect the menu to work. Now, I did mention in one of the previous videos, or several of the previous videos, that there would be a start, a pause, and a stop button. And for now, I'm just going to forget about that, and we'll do the menu, and maybe come back to that later. Anyway, so there's the menu designed. Um, so let's get on with it, let's start. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I get the input is uh, sort out the first menu. Well, I say the menu, they're not really menus, they're screens, but... Um, so sort out the first one. So what I'm going to do is here, comment out that delay and clear the display. Yeah, we want to clear the display and we want to control and slash comment that out as well. And in setup here, I want to put in the new uh, the new display, uh, you know, the first bit of the uh, menu system, which is the welcome part. So I want to display set text size, and that's going to be size 2, and display, uh, will I need to display colour? Yeah, I will. Set, um, set text colour, in the UK it's spelled like that. Anyway, set text colour, um, white, white, right now, display, dot set cursor and that will be 10 and 24 so 10 is the position from the left hand side and 24 is the position from the top of the screen and it's going to be display dot print learn and then the text and the text is going to be hello uh, hello dot actually then we want to display, display, dot, display. I don't know why, but you have to call this. Uh, I'm not, I've, I haven't exactly worked out what this display, display thing is. It seems to be, you know, update the OLED. Um, anyway, I, d I don't actually know if I need it, but I'm going to put it anyway. Delay, a thousand milliseconds. So that means print that and then wait for a thousand milliseconds. And then I'm going to repeat that. And I'm going to repeat it one more time. And this one's going to be two dots, and this one's going to be three dots. So Control T, Control S, and Control U. So if I've done this all correctly, what should happen is that when the thing first loads up, or when it first starts, it will clear the screen very, very quickly. It will do all this stuff here, like set the uh, pin modes and all this sort of stuff. And then it should print hello to the screen and after a second it'll put another dot on it and after a second it'll put another dot on it um, so hopefully this will work so I'll go over to the camera and we'll see okay so I've uploaded it and I've taken the cable out and put the cable back in and we'll see what comes on the screen perfect so nothing, hello dot, hello dot dot, hello dot dot dot. So that's cool. Uh, so far so good. Let's carry on with the code. So let's carry on. Now we need to um, to look into the second part of the menu, which is the bit that says insert cell and press when ready. So uh, we need to clear the display. Where's clear display? It's around here somewhere. There it is, clear display. Clear display, then we need this again, well actually we'll keep it white but we'll need this text size bit, and the text size will be 1, I don't know if you can do uh, you know, decimal in this, I'm not too sure, I think it's probably just integer only, um, anyway so we need to set the cursor again, and 10, 24, does that seem about right? Okay, I found this bit to be a bit um, a bit trial and error, really. But anyway, this is how I ended up. Um, 
So I've got display clear display to clear off the hello bit. Then display set text size one to get the small font. Then set the cursor there so 10, point, 10 pixels from the left and 16 pixels from the top. I've got display print then insert cell now. Then display set cursor 1048 so it's 10 from the left and 48 down in order to miss this text here. And it says in brackets press when ready. Um, so that's as far as I've got up to now and I'll go over to the camera and just show you how it's looking. Hello dot 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 insert cell now press when ready. That's good enough for now. So that's the first part that's menu 1 and menu 2 done. Time to carry on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to cut that out of there and I'm going to make a new method. So this is going to be called void um, and we'll call it display menu 1. Sounds alright. Display menu 1. And we'll paste that code into there. Control T, Control S and I'll put that in there. And the reason why I've done it this way is because later on we'll need to recall this method. So when the summary has been found or displayed, when you press a button it's going to revert back to this. But in order to re revert back to this uh, we'd have to either copy the code and paste it somewhere else or we just call this method. So it's easier to call the method. Right, so uh, what's next? We need something to be able to track which menu we're actually on. So I'm going to say here current menu equals 1. Current menu equals 1. And we need a variable up here byte current menu equals 1. The reason why I'm using byte is because one byte is sufficient to be able to um, store the amount of uh, numbers which would be in this particular variable. Current menu it's a byte so that number could go up to maximum of 255. So I wouldn't use integer because that would block out too much memory and as you can see over here it's already saying low memory available stability problems may occur. I'll have to address that another time. But for now, byte current menu equals 1. And when we display menu 1, it sets the current menu variable to 1. So what it means is that in the loop we can actually find out you know, where we are in terms of the menu. So uh, what's next? Well, we want the program to act differently depending on which menu uh, we're currently looking at. So if we're looking at the insert cell press when ready, we certainly don't want to be doing this if pause, if draining and all this sort of stuff. So um, we need a switch. Switch. Uh, switch current menu. Oh, I can't actually remember the exact syntax for this. I think it's case. Case one, then do whatever. Case two, then do whatever. Uh, etc. So, ah, this does present a problem actually. Um, if you remember uh, looking at my little flowchart menu system, um, it required that um, there was a step which said that if the voltage was below 3 volts when you put it into the uh, system and press start, then it would kick off with something. So, that uh, screen number or that screen is going to have to have a number as well. So, if we say uh, Menu 1 is the insert cell and press uh, when ready. Menu 2 can be the uh, the voltage is this, press the start. Number 3 can be, ah no, the cell you've put in is no good. So, case 3, break. <coughs> right, so, menu 1. Menu 1 is insert cell. Yeah, menu 1 is insert cell. Menu 2 is uh, voltage is voltage is whatever. Um, press the start. So menu 2. 
voltages, whatever. Menu three can be cell is no good, cell no good. So uh, menu four would be the drain screen, which is the main one. So case four, menu four, main drain screen. Then menu five will be the summary. So menu five, menu five, the summary. And well, that's all the menus really. And then after me after menu five, if it's pressed, if the button's pressed on menu five, then it'd revert back to number one, which is insert cell and press when ready. Right. So what we need to do now is move a lot of this co code over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, temporarily disable all the code that we've done up to now. So I'm going to cut it out completely. Um, I think it was there, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm going to cut it out completely. And I'm going to put that into menu 4. And not only am I going to put it into menu 4, I'm actually going to comment the whole lot of it out. So, control and slash to comment out, control T, control S. So now we're really getting there, and you can see that now we've got a menu system. Um, but there's something very important which we've not yet done. And that is to, of course, get the input and actually do something with it. Um, oh, we've got the delay problem as well. Um, we can't let this refresh every, well, we can't let it delay by a second because during that second of delay we may actually get some user input and of course if we're effectively sleeping we're not going to be able to get that input. Anyway, I think the next thing is to get user input. So here we go.